What is going on, y'all, and welcome back to the channel. I am Unknown Factions, and thank you for joining me for some more Valheim. And today, I'm going to be showing you 10 mistakes that you need to quit making right now. But first, if you're new here, please do consider subscribing and, of course, smashing that like button so your boy can get a little promotion. And with all that said, let us jump right into the first one. So mistake number one that I commonly see on my community servers and watching other people's streams is that they do not let their veggies seed out. Now, if you just hold off a little bit when you find some seeds, you plant your one and you let it turn into a flowered plant, it will produce three seeds. So if you don't just pluck the carrots as soon as the carrots are ready to go and you let the plant finish growing and seed out, that one carrot that you plant will turn into three seeds. So even if you just found one plant, you could start an entire farm, a huge farm from just that one plant if you are patient and you show a little self-control and don't eat the carrots and let it turn into seeds and you can have some massive exponential growth. Now, mistake number two that is a very, very common thing, which I even do sometimes, is forgetting to set spawn points and having backup resources before sketchy situation so as you can see right here on top of this sunken crypt we have a bed a chest with some poison poison resistance and some food inside of it so in case something bad does happen inside of there i can at least pop pop right back up on top of the crypt and i don't have to return all the way from your base which is usually fairly far away so setting a spawn point before your sketchy situations is super super important and a very common mistake which i I tend to still make even though I know this you know but I just get in a, a bit of a rush sometimes and then end up having to cross the entire map on a naked sail but moving on to mistake number three would be parking your long ship and carves way too close to the shore now as you can see from the ebb and flow of the seas your ship will go up and down and smack the shore and it'll start deteriorating and of course gray dwarfs and everything else can just run up and start beating the crap out of your boat like they love to and as you're out exploring and gathering resources you'll come back and find your ship has been destroyed and they do have the chance to not drop all the materials so keep it in mind that you can always just park your boat a little bit farther back like maybe right above the drop off you know or you could just beat the boat down yourself and then stick all your mats in the chest but that way, like I said before, it does have a chance to not drop all the materials. That's why sometimes when your boat gets destroyed, you'll go to pick up all the mats and you're missing either the hides or you're missing nails. You know, so there is a chance for you to lose some of the materials there. But I find it most safe just to park my ship a little bit far offshore and take the swim. You know, this is being safe rather than being sorry. <laughs> but moving on to mistake number four which would be not introducing wolves into your black forest biomes. Now, if you get yourself bred, uh, tamed and bred wolves, then you can bring them into the black forest and just leave them there. So you get them to follow you and then you leave them stay and they will hunt deers and continue to breed and thrive in the forest on their own. And this is also works as, you know, kind of a mat farm because as you run around in the forest where you've dropped these guys off, you're going to collect deer hides, resin from gray dwarves, everything, and... Of course, if they aren't one-star wolves, the trolls can uh, can take them out pretty easily. You know, I'm not going to say really easily. They still put up a good fight. But the one-star wolves are, like, untouchable. I mean, they just murder everything in the Black Forest. So don't be afraid to drop off some free-range wolves into the Black Forest because they will thrive out here on their own. And it's a great way to have a deer farm and just an AFK material farm in general. But moving on to another animal related mistake that I see commonly is sleeping on the locks. Now as you can see right here, I have 10 one star loxes with me from our lox breeder. Now you have to ride them over here individually, so it's it's better if you know if you did find Yagolth, you'd have to find some locks around it and just breed them, you know, real close to this. And I'm just going to demonstrate the power of these bad boys right here. You know, especially on like a solo playthrough, it would be so important cuz you could spend so much time prepping for Yag and instead you could always just breed up some animals you know be a beast master and you can just watch how fast these guys tear yaggle with a new asshole i mean they are insanely strong hopefully i'm not going to die here since i didn't bring any fire resistance or anything like that or even health pots so let's try to make this fast all right here we go mm. oh yeah here comes a fire and yeah and yaggle does so much damage he does tear these locks up but as you can see, I mean, just look at the hits that they're doing on Yag. Yeah, they're taking huge, huge slivers of his health down. Yeah, there we go. Get him, boys. Get him. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, look at that. Just eat him up in a matter of seconds. I mean, that is, there goes quarter of his health. Boom. Boom, yeah, and he's tearing those locks up too. You know, of course, they probably won't survive this, but just demonstrating to you on how important it is to bring tamed animals into fights. I mean, look at that. Oh my God, because the first time I fought Yagoth, I fought him for like an hour and a half, two hours by myself. And I wish, I just wish I would have known to bring some locks with me, because oh my, look at that, so fast. He's already under, almost to a quarter health. But moving on to the next common mistake that you see Valheimers make, which would be giving up on ore deposits way before they need to. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, but some of you may not, as I have come across quite a few people that don't realize how deep these veins just really go. Now, as you can see from the top, it looked like just one deposit. But as you delve down deeper, you see that I just keep uncovering and uncovering more and more copper deposits. Now, there's like six or seven of those large nodes right here. Now, if you have free fly capabilities, you know, some servers turn those on for people to take screenshots, you can always just take the camera and dive underneath the soil itself and see how many deposits are actually here. But if you're playing vanilla, then you're just gonna have to do it the old fashioned way, whip out your pickaxe and mine this shit out. Now, as you can see, there's like six or seven copper deposits underneath that one. So don't give up on your deposits before the time is due. Now, moving on to the next commonly made mistake in Valheim, which is thinking that braziers are just furniture and have no other purpose besides that. But as you can see right here on my third story of my beach house, we have a bed in need of a fire. Now, if you just slap down one of these new fancy standing braziers, you can see that my buddy can now lay in the bed as if it were nighttime, but it is not. So he's going to have to get his tail up out of there. Now, not only can you use the braziers, the hanging braziers and the standing ones as bed sources, bed fire sources, you can also cook on these bad boys, cauldrons, uh, the cooking stands for hanging meat, and what good is this, you might say, but if you have an extremely tall building, say like five stories and you no longer have the ability to put stone on top, then you would have a hard time making a kitchen, you know, five stories on just a wooden structure. So by using this, you could easily make a kitchen way up in the air on just wood and not have to worry about, you know, trying to find a way to get stone up there or find the support to be able to get stone up there. And yes, this also does work with the hanging braziers. You know, it doesn't look as good. You know, less, you know, an extra chain, I was going to say, less physically appealing, you know, but still, nonetheless, the concept remains the same, that you don't need to drag stone and whatnot way up in the air. So another handy tool. But moving on to my final mistake that most people make is not building over water. Now, this is the ultimate base defense. I mean, by far the best defense out there because the enemies can't even spawn. As you can see right now, I'm in the middle of a swamp raid and there is nothing out here. And this goes for all the raids, the Drake raids, Ashland raids, everything. Now, the whole reason being is that there is no spawn point, there's no ground for them to get on. And as you can see that little island over there, I have blocked all the spawn points with buried campfires and there's still a workbench hanging out there. So they can't even spawn on that little piece of land. But yeah, as you can see, looking down in the water, there is nowhere for them to go. So therefore the event starts and then they just don't spawn it. So definitely, definitely an underutilized tool that you can do. But hey, don't forget to comment down below and tell me which are these that you do commonly or that you did not know that you could do. And also, if you want to join the Gilded down below, we have two servers, private and public, members of the YouTube channel for the private server, public server for everybody else. But besides that, thanks for stopping by, folks, and I will catch you in the next one.